Hello, I'm Graham Roberts and I'm going to be in this session looking at a development environment called BlueJ. It's said to be for educators and you can see that bluej.org is the website to go to if you want to find out more about this particular um, integrated development environment. I'm using it because as you can see right now it shows a depiction of one object's relationship with another object. It will show if that object is using another object, using a line, or it will show with an arrow if one object is in fact a component of another object or if one object is a kind of object of another kind uh, using inheritance. So uh, also, um, BlueJ is used by many educational organizations, but one that's using it is the Open University, where you can do a module called M250, and they use BlueJ as a development environment for teaching uh, object-oriented programming and indeed the language Java. And uh, also a book that's written by the authors uh, of BlueJ called Objects First um, is currently October 2024 distributed uh, on that module. Well, that's the uh, diversion. Now what we're going to do is look at the actual um, development environment and some objects. It is not my target or goal to show you how BlueJ works. I'm going to assume that you know how to do that. I'm going to really just show inheritance and how BlueJ can depict this. Uh, straight away we are seeing here that we have some objects. Uh, there's an object called main and indeed it is the main object and in this object we'll find the main things that we need to run our program to get the other objects working together and those other objects are gas giant planet and celestial body another way to read that depiction is that a planet is a celestial body indeed a gas giant like Jupiter, planet Jupiter in our solar system, is indeed is a planet. And a planet in our solar system is indeed a celestial body because <laughs> it's up there in the sky. Right, so uh, this is not meant to be a classic and thorough explanation of the solar system, okay? This is really just to show inheritance in Java and how it's depicted in BlueJ. Right, so I'm going to assume an awful lot of things, so forgive me if I am presumption, I'm showing presumption. But uh, first off, let's look at main. Now I can show you what's in main, um, object main, by simply double clicking on it. And if I do that, what should happen is that we get uh, the text that is indeed the source code for that particular object. Now just to remind you that an object in Java is one that actually can run, it takes up memory. So in actual fact we're looking at four objects on the screen, main, gas giant, planet and celestial body, but really they're not objects. What they are are classes and that means that they are text files with the extension JAVA. To become objects they have to get the text the extension of dot class and when we compile a particular object as I'm calling it with a particular class it becomes an object. You'll find inevitably that object and class are spoken of as if they are the same thing but they're not 
there's not really four objects on the screen. There's really only four classes on the screen. And this is the main class. Uh, as you can see, it's called the main class because it's called main and it's a class. And the capital letter here is also significant in the way that Java programmers write code that suggests it is in fact not a method, but a class. A method being like a procedure that actually does something and cha usually changes the state of a object in memory. But we may come back to that. Okay, so this is the main class and within it, we have the main method. You can see this is the method because it's got a lowercase m. So there's the method there. And it takes off the command line um, a number of arguments that would actually be called strings, meaning they're characters. However, it, it doesn't do that in this particular case because we are running it in the IDE, BlueJ. So first off, what we find is that the celestial body, which is a class name, uh, has an actual name as a variable of sun. As you may know, the name of our sun is Sol. Yes, that's where we get solar system from and solar power. So the name of it is in fact Sol, S-O-L. Uh, so the celestial body, we're calling it the sun, uh, is equal to a new celestial body. Now, this is the construct for the celestial body class. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, we're going to use the new keyword here. That is said to instantiate the celestial body we're calling sun. Now what that means is that it will take up memory. Once it takes up memory, so at this point here, at this point, when it comes to that semicolon, as in, in the compilation process, you can talk as if sun is an object because sun will actually have memory and sun will have a name of sun and it will have uh, some parameters here indicating uh, aspects of its character, its phenomena, how much it weighs and so on. Okay, now the next line here is a class planet. And a planet, well, I think we're all familiar with one of them called the Earth. There are others, of course, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Mars, etc. Now, Earth is instantiated as a planet here. And as it's instantiated, it becomes an object. So now at this point, we could argue that we have two objects. We have a celestial body, we have a planet. And at the third line here, gas giant, uh, our example is Jupiter, is instantiated as a gas giant. So at this point, we have three objects instantiated from three different classes. At this point here, sun.displayInfo is saying that sun has got a method called displayInfo and it will show information on the screen that is in the terminal, that is on the command line or whatever one wants to call it wherever it is that your system dot out is uh, being ported to uh, in your system and in BlueJ it is referred to uh, as a terminal or output what will happen is that information about the sun will be shown on the screen then we put out a blank line then we do the similar thing with earth we show information about the earth then we put out a blank line and then we show information about Jupiter. Okay, that's reading the main class and showing that the main class is instantiating objects. Putting objects into memory, giving memory 
new memory to those objects. Right, now, wouldn't it be good if we could run this? Hmm. Well, if I close this here, and what we can see is we can see that we've got the celestial body um, information up, uh, the class details are there, and we can see we've got the planet there, and we've got gas giant here. But uh, let's let's not look at that for the moment. Let's uh, just look back to here. Okay, so we looked through what was in the main. We've just had a quick glimpse of what's in these particular classes. And remember that main is going to uh, kind of be like a sheepdog herding these three sheep into a pen so that they can be worked upon by the farmer, perhaps have their wool uh, sheared off. Um, Maine is going to do that. So Maine is our sheepdog. Right, so now I'm going to right click on this and I get the options of new Maine, which means that I can give memory to the main object uh, class itself, so it becomes an object. I can actually run the main method within the main class. I can do either. Well, let's try the new main. And that just gives me this, which sets up a new object. It's going to call it main1. Okay, well, let's do that. And it comes down here uh, in this particular IDE. You won't get this in, <laughs> in other IDEs, I think. But uh, it shows you the object in the sense that it's now in memory. And so because it's in memory, you can now say what is inherited from object. Um, object being the most basic and simplest uh, class that's available, which is compiled to make an object, which is the simplest object available. And that object, although it's not visible on the screen, uh, is inherited um, by the other classes and objects that we use. Well, all of these things are coming in from there. All right, so is there anything that's useful to us? Well, 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 no. So we won't bother with that. We can remove this. Now, what's the other option we have here? We can actually just run the main method. Seems a thing. We don't put any arguments in here. Remember I said that you could put commands in here. Um, we could put in there, for instance, something like um, what we want to call uh, one of the planets that we're going to create. If we wanted to do that, or how many we wanted to create, or something like that. But we don't want to do that. I'm just going to click OK. And what we get is this. And as you can see, the blue J is referring to this as a terminal. Uh, it's a standard output. We can see what we actually did here was to set up a main one object from the main class when we instantiated it using this new keyword. Um, and we can also see that after we did that, which was um, a painless waste of time, we can now just execute the main method. And what we get is that the name of an object called the sun has a mass of um, kilograms and a diameter of kilometers. Uh, it really doesn't matter how big they are because they could actually just be figments of my imagination. They really don't matter. It's just that they do have the, the, the star, the sun, soul, has a mass and a, a diameter. Now, the sun, if you remember, is in fact a celestial body. So since we can see that planet is a celestial body and gas giant is a planet, then we would expect the um, planet and the gas giant to also have mass and diameters. Okay, so we can see that the sun has a mass and diameter. 
we can see the Earth has a mass and a diameter, but the Earth also has a type. Now this type isn't a type um, as string is a type in Java. It just means it's a type of celestial body and it's said to be terrestrial. Now, what I'm getting at here is that the Earth, well, it's in the name, is terrestrial, which is of the Earth, and it has, I know, it has water, seas, but it also has land. And what it does not have is a massive ball of gas, which really is its main character, as, it, as with Jupiter. The Earth and Jupiter are distinctly different. And the number of moons that the Earth has is one. Jupiter, on the other hand, which is a different kind of planet, its type is gas giant. It has the mass, the diameter, but and the number of moons, but its number of moons is 95. And it also has rings. Well, um, you probably didn't think that Jupiter had rings, uh, but for this sake of an argument, uh, please just accept it does. And, uh, you know, we don't want to have Saturn up there and people reading it as Satan and all sorts. So let's just say Jupiter has rings. Uh, does the Earth have rings? No, it doesn't have rings. Right. So all I'm doing is differentiating between these objects in the output. Okay, so what do we do with this output? Nothing, we just leave it where it is. And now we're going to um, look at the um, main method again. Right, now we said that the Earth was terrestrial because that was what, what was output. If I change this uh, characterization of terrestrial to um, water and uh, land, right? Just that I just use it, call it that, right? And uh, I just leave uh, the gas giant Jupiter. Okay, what I'm going to do? I'm not going to change its other character. I'm just going to call it uh, uh, Satan. Uh, it's a turn, right? And I'm just going to now uh, disclose that. And what we should see, if I close all of these, is that we need to recompile. Now that means that the memory that we had associated uh, from main with, um, it, it, we had associated with these classes to make them objects, that's now changed because uh, this is not compiled. So we've got nothing now. There is no program running. Uh, to get this to actually compile, I could double click on it and compile it, or I could just go over here and click compile, which I'm going to do. Now I'm going to run it. Remember, we could just run the main method. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, what we need to find is uh, to view the terminal. Now it is showing, but it's not showing to us, which means that it's hiding. And here it is. I'm looking down at my taskbar and find it. And now let's look at what we've got. We had this output where uh, we had Jupiter, and now we have uh, Saturn. So we got Sun, Earth, and Saturn there and um, we can see that the earth type is water and land and not what it previously was now if you're thinking well um, that's a bit confusing we've got everything there we've got the previous run and this run that's true so that's that's cleared a lot and we don't have anything and now if we run this again we shall see that it's um, just one output on the standard output. Okay, so what was the point of that? Well, I'm trying to uh, show 
that these objects, and they are objects at the point of time that these are output, because you wouldn't be able to get this output if they weren't objects. They cease to be, they cease to be classes in text form and became uh, objects that could be compiled to what's called bytecode and then um, run using the Java virtual machine in a particular operating system, in my case it's Windows, uh, Windows 10 I think on this machine, and it will um, produce the output that we see here. Now let's look again at this screen. These little dotted arrows we could say means users. So main uses celestial body class. Main uses the planet class. Main uses the gas giant class. Another way we could look at pot this depiction is working the other way backwards. That gas giant is a component of main. That planet is a component of main. That celestial body is a compo component of main. Let's verify that using the class's actual source code. Now we can see that celestial body planet and gas giant are components of this particular class called main. They are components because it is composed of them when it is instantiated. It is composed of them. Now, the another way of saying this is that main has a sun and earth and Jupiter uh, as components of itself when it's actually instantiated. And because of that, it can actually display information about them because it has them inside itself, as it were. Let's deviate from here, right? And look, instead of the source code, I'm going to look at documentation. This is the Java doc, which is written for you in BlueJ. And um, what does it show us? It shows that there is a main uh, constructor here. That's the constructor of main. It is not the main method. And because everything is public, we can actually see anything that's useful here. But actually, the, uh, there's the main method there. Um, there isn't a lot to see, is there? No, not really. Because in our particular case, the source code is the most, it has the greatest illumination, really. Okay, now let's look at the um, the other classes here. Gas, giant, planet, and celestial body. Because the arrows are going up, it's very tempting to say, let's look at gas, giant first. Well, if we do, what does the up arrow mean? What we actually know, if we look at gas, giant, just for the moment, when we look at gas, giant we can see that the class gas giant extends planet. Extends means inherits from planet. Another way of looking at it is that what's in planet is in gas giant. So gas giant's got planet, but something else as well. And that's what those arrows are really trying to say. So let's just go back and see that. So gas giant extends planet and planet extends celestial body if we go up. Now if that is passing you by we can go the other direction. A celestial body is the most basic of these classes. We can say it's the superclass because these other classes are based on it. So gas giant is based on planet and planet is based on celestial body. Mm. So if we go up, we can say that gas giant 
extends planet, planet extends celestial body. And although we can't see it on here, celestial body extends object. If we go down against the arrows, we can say that celestial body is inherited from by planet and planet is inherited from by the gas giant. Okay, now having said all of that, there is a much simpler, easier way of looking at this. We can say that main has has a component look at these dotted arrows gas giant has a com as a component planet as a component celestial body but when we look at these arrows going up instead of worrying about what the extends keyword means or implies we can just say that gas giant is a planet so just imagine the two words is a along the arrow because that is what that little triangle means, that the gas giant is a planet and the planet is a celestial body and a celestial body is an object. Then the reason that the arrows are pointing up, I think, is more easily understood because some people think the arrow should be going down because the celestial body is giving material in terms of ideas, methods, uh, variables and so on for memory, uh, take up, things to be stored. It's giving state to planet and planet is giving state to gas giant. OK, now this was this diversion was useful, hopefully, because we can understand what the depiction is trying to tell us about the relationship of these classes and the relationships of the objects when they are instantiated. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look now, or oh, next, at the actual code. We we'll start with celestial body. All right, so let's look at the celestial body because actually the celestial body is the first of these classes to be written, yes. OK, so we're looking at the celestial body class. It has a name, so we give that the type string. It has a mass, we give that a type double. And we, it has a diameter, so we call that also a double. We make them private because that's the custom in uh, Java to actually have what we call encapsulation and data hiding principles which justify all the extra hard work that Java brings to coding. Right, so the celestial body is a constructor here for this class. So to make this class an object, it requires a constructor. And this is a non-default constructor because it has arguments inside of its little brackets. Because it's a constructor, it doesn't return anything. There's nothing here. It's not void. It's not a type. Um, but of course it does. What it returns is itself instantiate. It, it is instantiated when the new keyword is associated with it, as we saw in the main um, class when it's run in the main method. Anyway, so we pass to it a name and we pass to it a mass and we pass to it a diameter. Then we associate the instance variable name to the past name and the instance variable mass to the past mass value and the instance uh, variable diameter um, is associated with, takes on the value of the past um, diameter value. The keyword this indicates that it's this instance variable and this instance variable, this instance variable. And we don't actually have to have that there. 
we can actually just have like this. Sorry about the puns. And if I compile that, there's no problem at all. So why is that? Well, because the compiler is very aware of the instance variables that are in the class. And we don't need to use the this keyword if the instance variables of that class are being referenced within the same class. We need what's called getter methods when that's not the case. Another class is actually um, getting a value uh, from the uh, class or the object actually, getting a value from that object where it's instantiated. In that particular case, we need to say uh, really where the getter is associated and we use the dot notation and also we need to say what it's accessing. Um, in this particular case, we don't need to do that. And here we have the getter get name, which just returns the name, the getter for mass, getter for diameter. Here we have the two string override from objects to string, which returns the memory address, which is particularly useless to most of us most of the time. And we override it so it produces a string. The string is going to tell us important things. In fact, it's going to tell us the things that we are going to output. It's going to tell us um, what the celestial body uh, can be described as, and that would be its name, its mass, and its diameter. Uh, then we're going to have a method display info, which just simply writes those out, as in this particular case here. Can we execute this? Right, now let's have a look at that. We close that, we recompile, because we've been messing about. And if I go here and I make a new celestial body, I have to go through all of the tiresome uh, carrying, uh, executing um, the keyboard, basically. So I have to say that the new celestial body is called uh, soul. Uh, its mass is lots, right? And its uh, diameter, well, it's very big, you know. Yeah. And um, there we go. Uh, these might be just cast it to the doubles, yes? Or, or am I, oh, let's put in a dot. A dot zero, just so we, we are going to pretend that they're doubles. Okay, so I click OK. And... Uh, I want to, I don't know what's happened there, I'm just going to recompile and do that again. I'm going to put that here, I'm going to call that soul. I'm going to give it some sort of mass. <laughs> I'm going to give it some sort of mass and I don't really care over much. Right, I'm going to just say OK. Oh, now in Java, integers have to be within certain limits. And um, funny enough, these are too big. But if I put a little dot in there, then it will be able to cope with them. So, okay. So now if I look here, what can I actually see? Can I display the information? Right, so I'm going to have a look and see. Uh, looks like I can. There we go. So it looks like I can do that. There we go. Right. So yes, can do that. Well, what about else can I do? Can I uh, get the diameter? Well, yeah, I can. Right. Uh, can I get the mass? Well, of course we can. Get the name? Yes, it's going to be soul. Can we look at the uh, string to string? Well, we can, but that's not terribly useful. Um, so there we are, we haven't really got much at all, but we can access Celestial Body when it's instantiated and have a look at its memory, as it were. Okay, so I'm going to remove that, and it turns out we can do the same with these as well. Um, more or less really the same. 
And let's look at planets. Uh, source code. Here we can see that planet extends celestial body. So basically planet is a celestial body. So extends keyword could actually be replaced by four letters is a. So planet is a celestial body. And you can see that it has um, a type and it could have been called terrestrial as it was originally. And it uh, will have a number of moons. The um, planet constructor will take what um, we had for a celestial body. It must have a name, mass and diameter. It now also has to have a type and it also has to have a number of moons. But we can pour, push all of those into one kind of command line, as it were, or parameter list that we send to a planet constructor. Here, though, super is saying that the super class, its constructor, will be invoked with the name, the mass, and the diameter. How and why are we doing that? Well, the how is because the superclass has got memory, although we can't see it directly here. We know it's got memory because it's extending celestial body. Planet is extending it. It is a celestial body. To be a celestial body, it must therefore, planet must therefore have, although they are hidden, the characteristics of a celestial body. And what were they? Well, they were the name, the mass, and the diameter, weren't they? So just look back at that. So there's the celestial body. The celestial body had its constructor, and when we write super in the subclass, which is planet, then it's actually calling the celestial body constructor with the name, the mass, and the diameter. And uh, so this constructor, although it's not visible in the planet class, is actually there because planet is a celestial body and because planet is extending celestial body. We also have get name, get mass, get diameter inside here. Uh, we have the two string, we have the display information. So let's go back to our planet source code. And do we have a getter for name? Yes, we do. It's just not visible. Do we have a getter for diameter? Yes, we do, but it's not visible. Do we have a getter for the mass? Yes, we do, but it isn't visible. And we have a, a new method called get type, a new getter, which returns the type for this particular uh, planet class. And when it's an object, it will be able to look up memory and find what the type is described to be, whether it's terrestrial or whether it's water and land, whatever that particular string is. And very simply, the number of moons can be returned by asking uh, what's the value of the number of moons instance variable stored at the moment when it's run. And uh, in the case of the planet Earth, it will be one moon, of course. And we can see that we've got display info here. We said that display info must already be, although hidden, available from the superclass. And it is. But here we're overriding the superclass display info method, meaning we're actually enforcing it to be out of scope and making this in scope for planet that we can describe the planet um, in terms of its type and its number of moons. If we didn't do that, all we could ever find out about the planet, about the Earth as an object, is its name, its mass, and its diameter. 
But we want to know also its type and its number of moons. We didn't want to know that of our celestial body because the celestial body was in actual fact not as defined as planet is. So we can now go from there and look at the gas giant. The gas giant is a planet. So what planet had in it terms of its um, public methods and uh, its public uh, variables, instance variables, whatever, is also available in gas giant now. It's just we can't see that. It's not self-evident. It's evident in abstraction from these arrows. The gas giant is a planet. Well, if the gas giant is a planet, then it must have what a planet has. If a planet is a celestial body, it must have what a celestial body has. Let's go back to gas giant. Right, so now the gas giant has got a new feature. And its feature here is that it has rings. And the, um, the nature of rings around a planet is such that it has them or it doesn't. The Earth doesn't have them. And, for instance, the planet Saturn does have them. So does this gas giant have rings or not? It does or it doesn't. And so we said it to be of type Boolean. When we construct the gas giant now, we need a name, the mass, the diameter, number of moons, and also the state of the ring possession. Does it have them or not? Is it true or false? We send that to gas giant, but the superclass can now take the name, mass, diameter, the name and the number of moons sorry the type i beg your pardon the name mass diameter the type of planet and the number of moons of the planet the superclass of planet will handle the gas giant and the number of moons uh, arguments and the superclass of the planet which was celestial um, class will be able to handle the name, mass and diameter. We say whether the um, has rings instance variable is true or false from this argument here. So the only parameter of the constructor for gas giant that it actually has to handle itself is this line here, this statement. We have to actually find out whether it has rings or not for the uh, overridden display info. So we have a getter here and we use the, um, we don't have to use the getter here in the two string because the two string can just simply query the has rings itself. Now this is a ternary operator, T-E-R-N-A-R-E-O-Y, sorry, and that's just another strange way of writing an if-then-else statement, but I'll come back to that. Right, so now we're going to override and display info, and because this is in the gas giant, which is the most sophisticated of our objects because it is built from other objects. In the case of the planet, it was only really constructed, founded on the celestial object, but the gas giant object is actually founded on the planet as well. So uh, we have to override, but we can use the super display information, which was overridden itself so that we can actually uh, use the inheritance from the more uh, super class.
classes. Now they're super in the sense that they are above each other. Uh, what I mean by that, let's just go back, is that gas giant has its super class planet because the planet is above it. And the planet is a super, uh, sorry, the super class of planet is celestial body because it is above planet. So uh, celestial body is the super, super <laughs> object. <laughs> okay, so it is the most sophisticated of the objects is gas giant here. Why do we bother with all of this? Right, right, let's come back. Why, why are we looking at these? Well, because we're trying to interpret what these lines mean. And uh, hopefully uh, we can see that the main uses gas giant, uses planet, uses celestial body classes. And we can see that uh, when they're in objects, they are components of a main class object. That is, gas giant, planet and celestial body are all part of the main object. We can also see that a gas giant is a planet and a planet is a celestial body. So planet will use the super constructor and gas giant will use the super constructor of planet. So gas giant will be able to use the super constructor of celestial body via the super constructor of planet. Yes. Right, but what's the point of all of this? Well, perhaps the easiest way to show this is by actually using the debug features of BlueJay. So I'm going back into uh, BlueJay here and I'm going to uh, put in a um, break, as it's called, so that when we run the program, it stops here and gives me the option of running via the debugger, which um, we actually have. I beg your pardon, right here. Uh, if we go to view, uh, show debugger, we will. There it is. All right, so I just plonk that up there so we can see it. Now I've put in a breakpoint, so if I run here and say I want to run this, it should and does uh, stop at the point I asked it to. And we have some options down here. We can step through, step into, continue, or we could terminate. Terminate is a bit drastic. Don't want to do that. Uh, what, what do I want to do? Well, I think I will uh, step into. Now, if I step into this, where do you think it will go? What source code do you think it will enter? Yes, I hope you're right. What it's done is it's gone into the constructor for celestial body and it's got different values. We can see what the values are for these parameters over here on the right hand side. Now I can step on that and uh, you should look on the screen and see values changing as we get to know what the name is. It's called the sun and the mass and the diameter is associated or um, assigned, we might say, in memory. And we know that this is an object because uh, the only way we can see any of this is if an object has been created. Right, so we've done that, we've stepped through, and now we're going to step again. And if I say step into, where do you think we will go? What source code do you think we will use? I'm going to click into it now, and it's gone into the planet constructor. Now the planet constructor has super name mass diameter, which is the constructor that is in celestial body. So if I step into, we might expect it to um, go into the celestial body class. Remember this up here says class planet extends celestial body. 
celestial body is a different object at this time. It does exist, but it is a different object to this one planet. So if we step into it, we go to celestial body again, and the name, mass and diameter are indeed initialized. We've done this super constructor here, and now we're going to step into uh, the next line, which will um, assign to the type instance variable the uh, description of the planet, whether it's, for example, land and water or terrestrial. We say the number of moons is going to be one, um, and you can see looking here that it is indeed one. And now we're going to uh, step again and we're going to gas giant. Ah, you'll be used to this. By now, we're going to step into the gas giant class. And we do, and the constructor there, we're going to step into the planet constructor because the planet constructor already exists because planet is in fact extended that is gas giant is a planet so we step into that and it will now use the super constructor of planet which is the, the constructor for celestial body and there we go we can see that's happening and we can set the number of moons remember we are actually in planet here we are not in gas giant now we're back in gas giant and gas giant is said to have rings and now we just step and carry that out now we want some in, uh, information exp, ex, uh, shown so we're going to step into the sun's display information right we've got the sun the earth and jupiter the display info of the sun is just three parameters. So let's step into that. And we can see it's going to output just the three things. And we just can print a line. And now the Earth, when we go into the Earth object, the display info will go to super. So if I click on info here, where do you think it will go? We're, we're in planet. Do you think it will go to the celestial bodies? Yes, it does. It goes to the celestial body display info method. And there we have that output. Now we can um, print the type and the number of moons. Print a line. And now we can do the same for Jupiter. And what Jupiter will do is um, go into the super classes display info, which was planet, and planet will go into celestial bodies. And what we will get is all the information except for the rings of Jupiter. And uh, then the Jupiter object will display, as it were, the rings. Let's, let's see that happening. Yes, that's really uh, the point of this. So we step into there and we say we want to see the super constructor. Then we want the super constructor. We do that, print out. Then we do um, the planets constructor. Oh, sorry, um, I meant to say display info method and then we finally print the rings of Jupiter and then we are done let's just see that finishing there it is it's done and I'm going to terminate oh it's already terminated <laughs> I'll just get rid of that and um, there we are so we've had a run through of that let's just uh, close all of these have again look at this and do a run main method 
and we look at <laughs> here what we got and we can see that we've been very busy so we're going to go up here and clear and we're going to run this again so that we can actually see more clearly what is going on right so we can see that the type of the um, earth is water and land but we actually originally said that that was terrestrial how would we change that well we go on to if we go into planet it doesn't enable us to do that to change anything there because planet is informed of the type by the constructor and the constructor is given that information where in main yes in the main method so it's here that we must change this back to terrestrial and uh, we could say that we've got more than one moon if we wanted to tell lies we could make this turn this back to what it was uh, Jupiter originally wasn't it and uh, we can say that Jupiter had rings or we can say it doesn't in this case I'm going to say it's false I'm going to now close this I'm going to compile oh no I've, I've compiled already I'll do, it, I'll do it again there we are compile and I can now run this and it will show us I believe it or not it is showing it's just you can't see it on the screen um, it will show us this and what we can see from this run here this one is that the earth is terrestrial and that Jupiter doesn't have any rings so if you were bellowing away at the screen telling me that Jupiter doesn't have rings you've got your way right so what is next well I have closed it down my blue jay and I'm now looking at where the blue jay files are where the package is and this if I double click on package blue jay it will uh, try and run the program and will try and show us everything we've been seeing but what I've done is made the types of these files more evident I've grouped them so celestial body Java is the source code for that class indeed it is the text for that class it's just a text file and gas giant is the text file for the gas giant and main is the text file for the main class and planet.java is the text file the source code for the planet class but they have been compiled and the class object that has been compiled is called the same name but with the extension dot class so for that celestial body dot class gas giant class main class and planet class so those are the objects this 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 and this are objects they literally can uh, be uh, taken up in memory when the program is run in user memory for the program if I delete those so if I delete those one two three four if I delete those if it lets me it might not because it might be associated and Windows will protect itself if that's in memory at all okay so what I had to do was uh, tell Windows it didn't matter and uh, I can delete them uh, actually I had to instantiate a different BlueJ uh, because the Java 
a virtual machine and the Java um, development kit are um, kind of protective of what they've been using. Anyway, I've got rid of them. They're gone. So that means that there are only class files here. There's no object file. If I run this um, package bluej, and let's show you what's in package bluej actually while we're talking about it. And so if I show it with notepad, we can see it just is a text file which has information about what we want to to look at. So let's just run that. Um, here comes Blue J, and what we've seen before, but there's no compilation there. Um, well, because there are no classes, objects classes, that is. And I'm sorry about this, it's not my fault. But a Java source file is, has got the extension of Java, and the object, once it's compiled, has got the extension of class. But actually, the Java source code is in fact the class. It's unfortunate. Um, naming convention. Anyway, let's compile that. And what we should see on the left-hand side here, hopefully, is some new um, compiled versions of the source code, known as bytecode, partially compiled, really. Um, it will appear in the list. Right, so if I compile them, and there you see they've been populated here. Uh, Gas Giant hasn't quite got there. Uh, although it has, there's a difference between the actual and the represented, which sometimes you get in Blue J. I just do another compilation. It actually was there, but it just didn't update our screen. And so if I run this, we should get the same result we had originally, and that is, uh, in this particular case, Jupiter has no rings, and uh, and there we have it. So let us make a summary of what we've been doing together. What we have done is to look using BlueJ at a set of four classes. And we've seen how one class, the main class, actually can use have components of gas giant planet and celestial bodies so that it can associate memory to them using the new keyword. That's the important new keyword there. And as that new keyword is uh, instantiating these, these become three objects. And those three objects are components of main object. We saw that a gas giant is a planet, is a celestial body. We usually start with the super uh, class rather than its subclass because we can't make a subclass without having the superclass already extant. And that's why when we read up, it's sometimes a bit disconcerting. Really, what has happened is the celestial body um, was created first. And then we created a planet which extended the celestial body. And so that planet is a celestial body. Turning it around the other way, we can say celestial body is extended, or sorry, extends planet, and planet extends the gas giant. I hope this has been useful to you. I'm Graham Roberts. Until the next time, bye for now.